Hello, this is Tatiana with Truthball in Search of Goof. Uh, this is a video about, I should call it a uh, survivor strategy uh, regarding gray rock. Okay, um, before I get started, a uh, reminder, I'm not a doctor. These are my own personal experiences. These videos are part of my own coping strategy. My goal is that I am validating what you are feeling if you found my video, if you think that you're in a narcissistic or abusive relationship. Um, if you are validated, then you can start making a plan to get out. Okay, and as I mentioned, this is actually a video regarding a survivor strategy that I hear about all over the place. And um, so most likely if you're watching this video, actually you do recognize that you are in a narcissistic relationship. And that could be, you know, of, of course, you know, with a, you know, a lover, a husband, boyfriend, whatever. Um, but the, this strategy of gray rock also works um, you know, in the workplace, at school, wherever it is that you are dealing with a narcissist. So first of all, I want to say, um, I only heard the term gray rock, I don't know, six months ago or something like that in a um, online support group. And once I read the definition, I thought, oh, well I did that naturally. So this is the thing. I did search up, search up a definition and I found a really good article which I don't know where it is now. So if I find it, you'll find it in the comments below. If I don't find it, it's not there. <laughs> okay. Um, but it was a great definition, and yet still I feel like it needs to be simplified. Uh, mostly because most of us, when we're initially going to a support group or something like that, when we first hear it, we're, we don't have... We're still educating ourselves, and so uh, at least that's what I'm seeing is most people are still in the process of shock that this really is a narcissistic relationship and bringing in the concept of gray rock, your participation, your conscious partic participation in not participating anymore in the codependent dysfunction is, co is kind of a big concept to take on. So I'm trying to do this video um, for just anyone. If you're not even ready to understand everything, I want to give this strategy to you in a, uh, I'm not thinking of the right word, but basically try to give it in a real life situation, more than the definition. How does gray rock work to help me survive what I'm going through? Okay. Now, the key also that I'm talking about is it's survival. Number one, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, truly, you want no contact. So if you can get away from that person and have no contact, do it. This is a strategy for those who are stuck in relationship, whatever it is, at work, etc. You're stuck there. So how do you get this person to truly leave you alone? And the goal of Gray Rock is, very simply put, you want the abuser to get bored with you because a narcissist is feeding off of your pain, whether it's rejection, getting you angry, making you feel hurt, whatever pain they are able to induce, drama, they are feeding off of that. And you need to not let them know that it's bothering you does bother you but you need to not let them know that and they will get bored with you so I'll tell you about my history with gray rock prior to understanding the term in fact I think I've only had to go gray rock on somebody once since reading the definition in fact I would say I learned gray rock from my dad my abusive father so when I was in high school I would I was um, a white girl in a highly non-white population. Not African American, you know, if somebody's got some issues with that, I'm just saying that I was a minority. Now, in that setting, I was being teased and harassed and, you know, I can say I've never really fit in anywhere, so I wasn't fitting in in high school. <laughs> and 
I was taking a lot of guff for that. And I felt physically threatened. In fact, um, this is way before there were problems with it, but I did carry a knife to school in case to protect myself. I was that kind of girl. Punk. I was a punk. But I was intimidated. Inside, I was afraid. Um, I was not a large, strong, confident person. However, my dad at some point had said, and I can't remember the words he said, and I sure do wish I did, but he basically told me to be nice. Whenever someone is bothering me to be nice. So now that I know the definition of gray rock, I go back and I'm like, that was gray rock. So for example, I had this pretty buff chick um, who would harass me every single day. And we sat next to each other in whatever it was, social studies or something like that, science. Anywho, so this is way back in the 80s, y'all. And I'm in a small community, and that's when, um, you know, like Converse high tops were coming out. And I was like, these are so cool. They're so cool. And, of course, I'm the only one at the school wearing them. And I had gotten to take a trip to California. So not only did I have Converse high tops, but I had them in an extremely unique color. Yes, I love these. Okay, and she's trying to pick on me. So I'm sitting in class with my new sneaks, and she starts off with, yeah, you know, nice sneakers, where'd you get those? She's ready to cause a problem. And I just was nice and just pretended that I was a total flippin' idiot. Totally. I was like over the top. I know when I started to show them, I was like, I got these in California on this trip. They were only t whatever it was, $29.99. Can you believe it? And they're Converse. Okay. Sorry if that reverbed on your speakers, but that was how loud I got. I just got super like, I'm a total idiot. I have no idea that you're trying to bother me. And what did she do? This is high school. She looked at me like I was crazy, which is good enough for me fight over. In fact, I think she only teased me maybe once or twice more. And she never teased me again. It worked. Gray rock. Okay. So let's see. And that's again, my point. She never could see on my face that she really did scare the shit out of me. She really did scare me. She's a big girl. I have watched her. I had watched her kick someone's ass on um on the street off of the school bus i and i'm i'm throw down punch the crap out of this girl that's who was picking on me <laughs> okay and uh worked okay so let's see later on in life using gray rock many of us who have been in like i was with my dad um in a severely extremely physically abusive relationships um, severely violent verbal gaslighting, um, emotional, psychological meltdown, abusive relationships. Um, many of us and children, you know, if you were abused as a child, you might remember doing something like this. I believe that your body, uh, your mind naturally, um, does gray rock as a survival strategy where, um, where that meltdown is happening and there's threats and all this kind of stuff and you are calm. You just get calm like everything's okay and you're gonna wait it out. Okay? I had that happen excuse me many many years later with someone else in my family where they out of nowhere I, I was totally shocked totally shocked and everyone there was shocked. It was really, uh, I would say even traumatic. Other people who witnessed what was happening were kind of, not kind of, they were traumatized. It was, uh, um, it was discussed for several days afterwards. But I was, uh, my sister and I were verbally berated and attacked for something that that person perceived that we did, that we uh, to this day, I, I still don't feel like I did it, okay? But I'm standing there with my sister, and this person is screaming and cussing and yelling 
with his face in my face and trying to intimidate both of us, which is the same kind of thing that my dad used to do to my sister and I, and I was the one who would protect her verbally from my dad. So I'm instantly, I was like, I don't know. I was like somewhere in my thirties. I'm a grown woman. I cannot believe this is happening to me. And he is totally to the point that people were coming out. In fact, my sister's husband came out and tried to get in between. Um, it was bad. And so, and that's what the narcissist wants, right? He wants me to feel like crap. He wants my sister to feel like crap. And then the husband is trying to come in and there's high heightened drama and they are feeding what the narcissist wants. And I'm just looking at him and I'm instantly, yes, terrified, confused, everything that they are feeling, wanting to defend myself, wanting to explain myself. And all I said was, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I did that. What, and then, since I'm not really understanding what he's saying, because it's so gaslighting and all over the place, I just change my posture and I'm listening to anything that I can grab onto that I can repeat back to him. I'm so sorry I did, quote. I'm, I'm so sorry that I did, quote. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, quote. Anything that I could pull out that made half, half of a moment's sense, okay? And he started to calm down because he wasn't getting a rise out of me, right? But he is getting, he's getting his narcissist supply. He thinks, he thinks that I feel shame. I don't feel shame. I'm pissed off. I'm offended. I'm angry that he's making my sister upset who doesn't understand what he's doing. I'm pissed, right? I'm giving the narcissist uh, the supply on my terms. I want this over as fast as possible, right? So that, that to me is another way of going gray rock. He's not going to get the supply that he wants, the true supply. The true supply is him getting my anger and pain and arguing with him, okay? That, that would be me participating in this. I'm feeding the narcissist on my terms. I'm going to walk away from this a fucking survivor. And I don't, I don't give a shit if I'm lying to him. I don't give a shit if he walks away thinking he's God's gift to justice, that he did something right by totally attacking us publicly. I don't care of the ramifications. I'm surviving. I'm walking away, and this is ending as fast as possible because she doesn't deserve it. I don't deserve it, but she really doesn't deserve it. She doesn't know what's going on. So I get him all the way, almost calmed down and ready to walk away. And my sister loses her shit. She just started bawling. And she's like, I don't even see what, what I don't know. And she started to attack him back. I'm like, <laughs> and I physically, I remember the moment she did that, I just, I, I did. I was like, oh, fuck. And I thought, crap, how much longer is this going to go on for? So it went on for, I think at that point, I started to change the, the physical dynamics. I was like, you know, you know, uh, you know, let's go. And I'm grabbing her arm and I'm going to get her into the car. And, um, and now I'm scrambling. I, I'm scrambling because I need her to shut up. I need her to stop feeding the narcissist his true supply. She needs to get with the program at, that we're, we're out of here. It's over and we're really sorry. And she's not going to say she's sorry. You know, she's pissed. I get it. I'm pissed too. Anyhow, so I, I do get it to calm down enough that I get her in the car. Um, and just totally sorry. Okay, so that is another gray rock. Excuse me, gray rock. And that, and, and that truly did... It hurt a lot of people. It worked. It worked for what he wanted. Okay. But I went gray rock. Okay. I did have a meltdown about it. Oh, I held it together for probably about three days, three or four days. And I, I, it was bad. You guys, it, it was bad. I, I, I self-sabotaged a few things in my life after that. It was extremely painful. But in the moment, I mean, as far as that guy knows, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I don't even know what he was really mad about. Okay, so uh, so that's another example in real life of going gray rock while you're still communicating, okay? Um, on your terms, okay? And, and I would say that if you're going to do it on your terms, do not do the anger. Do not do defending yourself. You want to be submissive. Submissive is the easiest one, and, and as I had started with this explanation, those of us who have had to go into survival mode when we're being attacked um, in extremely abusive relationships, that's the one that calms them down. It is. Okay, and then, so let me see. Um, as I mentioned before in my uh, Covert Overt Narcissist video, this last relationship, abusive relationship that I had been in, um, I was able to quickly realize that it was abusive. I still had all the emotional things that go along with awareness that I'm in an abusive relationship. But the key to this one was is that I was so aware of what was going on, I was able to go gray rock again before knowing what the term is. So what do I want to say about that? Um, what was key, I think, was the awareness of it. And, and also I want to point out that um, when you are in, I, I, and I've tried to say this many times, the narcissist who is abusing you has tried many, many, many things to upset you. And they are searching for the ones that bother you. Okay, so I'm going to insert that, that bit of encouragement that I've said in other videos as well. Whatever insult that they said to you is a lie. They only kept teasing you and poking you until they found the one thing that hurt. Okay, and I can validate that that is true because of what I experienced in this last relationship that was, thank the Lord, short. Uh, maybe three or four months that I was stuck living with this guy. And right about a month in is when I was able to go fully gray rock and just realize, yes, 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 he is a narcissist. And so what I saw him do was trying to poke me and see what would bother me. And then if that bothered me, then he would have stayed on it. So since I did not, since I was gray rock and he was not aware that he was upsetting me, he would have to try something else. And that is why, you know, when you, if you watch some of my other videos, why I'm saying that that was actually one of the worst, worst experiences of my life because I was aware and gray rocking, he had to try a new strategy every single day. Every single day he kept trying, that didn't work, then try this. This didn't work, try that. This didn't work, try that. So it was an onslaught, a nonstop onslaught of me consciously being aware of him trying to hurt me as opposed to the other relationships, like my ex-husband, the covert narcissist, well, he messed with me all over the place. And it wasn't until years of therapy later that I looked back and I was like, oh, he was trying to bother me. <laughs> I didn't care. Okay. <laughs> Everything this guy did, I'm watching it like, oh my God, I'm telling you, this is what they're doing. So gray rock one day after another. All right. So let me give you a few examples and I'll, and I'll wrap this up. Um, for example, oy, I don't even like remembering this stuff, but for you babes, for you babes, I'm going to go down this road. Okay, uh, I mentioned in another video where um, he had put his uh, Buddhist worshiping thing in the public space so that I, it was a gaslighting tactic so that I would be the bad person for walking into the living room and living, you know, in the house. Uh, while he's worshiping, okay? Because remember, prior to this, his worship Buddhist the, the temple was in his office where it didn't bother anybody, okay? I already knew that he was going to put it in the public space. So I had written out my angry letter knowing that this was coming down the pike, and when he did do it, I felt validated, like, yes, 
This guy is just a freaky narcissist. I knew he was going to do this, and now it's three days later, and he is doing it. And what am I going to do? I'm going gray rock, which means if he's going to come and worship at this temple in the middle of the living room, and I'm in the middle of cleaning the house, well, I'm an idiot. So I'm just going to keep on cleaning the house. I'll go around him. I won't say anything. But I'm an idiot. So I don't know any better. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a Buddhist. I, oopsie. Okay. He did it once and never did it again. Because it didn't bother me. Right? Oh, it bothered me. <laughs> it bothered me three days before he did it. I was so like, God, he's just such a psychopath. And I'm not prepared and it's going to piss me off. And yeah, it bothered me. He didn't know that. Gray rock. Okay, what's another one that he did? God, he just did so many. Um, financial abuse. Okay, so he would, you know, he's supposed to give me money for groceries and would, like, put it in his office. Supposed to, just give it to me. Just give it to me. I, these are things that I need to get for the house. He tells me it's, the, it's that he has it. But he wants me to beg him for it. And I'm going to go gray rock on that shit. And it's going to cause me pain. Real pain. Real pain because I don't have money for food. I don't have money to wash clothing. I, I have no gas money. I've, I've got nothing. And I'm not going to ask him. I'm just going to play stupid. I remember just going days and just praying about it. And just saying, I mean, this is so hard. It was so hard. Okay. Until eventually, it's like, well, you want your laundry done too, right? I bet, I guess you better give me the money, right? So eventually he would give me the money because he needed his own crap done. So the game wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to go and give him what he wanted. Can I, can, please, can I have the money? Asshole. Fuck. <laughs> okay, another one. I, you know, I'm not going to give you whatever it was. I have 120 examples. If it was a four-month relationship, I have 120 examples of going gray rock. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. Okay. Actually, and you know, uh, another really simple one, um, the, the last one I'll put in there um, is, you know, he was vegetarian. I was not vegetarian. And these, these are ones I've mentioned in other videos, but in real life, he, you know, I'm just trying to give you a, a little bit of real life how does this how does gray rock work okay so the last one is just um we're talking about nonverbal passive aggressive behavior um and him being a vegetarian me not being a vegetarian let's say i had a i don't remember what i had in the refrigerator some chicken strips let's say i've got chicken strips right and he has his vegetarian chicken strips okay so they're on the same shelf they're in the same drawer in the refrigerator. So I've got, I'm opening the refrigerator door and my chicken strips have been taken out of the drawer and put like on the lowest shelf. You guys get it? It's totally simply passive aggressive. Your food is not allowed to be near my food. Totally passive aggressive. And I'm looking at it like, you're just such a slimy, worthless, passive aggressive piece of shit. I cannot believe that you would waste your heart, your mind, your energy on doing something so pathetic and trivial in order to hurt another human being. You walk, talk, breathe, hurting other people. What a waste of a soul. My loves, let's enjoy life. You see crap like that, you say nothing. You say nothing. You're welcome to feel it. I get it, babe. I get it. And you go on to your uh, support group. You put it in your journal. You talk to your girlfriend and say, fuck, what an asshole and you act stupid. 
you act stupid no matter what it takes no matter what it takes you act like you have no clue because in the end and I've said this in in the other video the dude left me and he left me high and dry praise God he God did take care of me but if I replay it like I had no faith and that God wasn't going to work it out that fucktard left me without a dime without a dime because I wouldn't play I wouldn't play it was terrible honeys it was terrible but it works okay and if you are going if you can go no contact do it if you cannot go no contact the next best thing is for that abuser to leave you oh for them to leave you now did he come back and hoover me yes did he come back and try to play a ton of games? Yes. It doesn't matter. Even if they leave you, honeys, they're still going to hoover you because they love abandoning you. Okay? And when he did tell me he was leaving, I did the strategy I told you, the gray rock, where I'm feeding him what he wants. I'm feeding him. Oh, okay. I'm scared. But I know the fucker's going to leave me without a dime. I know I'm screwed. I know. But... I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. I don't know what's going to happen in my life, but I know everything is going to be okay because he's leaving. Okay, so instead I'm going to feed him that I'm sad. That was really, truly, honestly, one of the happiest days of my life. Totally confusing, totally terrifying, and so happy and grateful inside. I thought, all my prayers are working. Okay. All right. So I hope, I hope, I hope this is valuable to someone who wants to understand gray rock i hope i explain myself well because you know i'm you know i'm a rambler peeps so i appreciate you always hanging in there with me okay that is all of it and again um like i said this video truly is for someone who is aware that they are in um an abusive relationship um but if you still feel like you need to talk that was another thing if you're journaling it out you know, whatever your true feelings are while you're going gray rock if you're losing your shit Give the Domestic Violence Hotline a call. The National Domestic Violence Hotline. You can call them and say, I'm having a meltdown, he's doing this, and I'm, and I'm going, or she is doing this, and I'm going gray rock on it, but I really need to just say how I feel to another human being. Give the National Domestic Violence Hotline a call. Okay, guys, guys, if you're nervous, Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It's anonymous, okay? Get help. All right, uh, the number is 1-800-799-SAFE. 1-800-799-SAFE, which is 1-800-799-7233. Wishing y'all much love.